Hi guys, I hope you're having a beautiful day as always. Oh, bugs already. <laughs> um, welcome to week two of my garden tour. So um, this week we're gonna kind of look around. I'm gonna try and make sure that you guys have a better, more steady view of all the plants and what each of the beds are looking like. Um, so it doesn't make you seasick like it made me seasick <laughs> editing last week's video. Uh, but yeah, there's been some awesome growth within the last week. Uh, we have a couple of things that we're going to be planting that are new additions, some things that have failed, and we can kind of check in on how the neem oil has been helping or not helping. One of my favorite things about gardening is planting that itty bitty little seed and then just watching it develop and grow and ultimately give you something that you can harvest from, whether it be flowers, that you can just enjoy looking at them. You can pick them and take them into your kitchen or give them to a friend or family member or, um, you know, actual literal things you can, you can harvest and eat. Green beans, tomatoes, corn, lettuce, everything. It's just amazing how you can take just such a tiny little thing and grow it into something beautiful and enjoyable and usable. Tomorrow I'm actually going to be heading out of town for like two and a half days, so I won't be gone for very long, but I am out here every single day, sometimes multiple times a day, checking on my garden to make sure that nothing silly is going on, and I just really enjoy seeing the changes that the plants have from day to day, which sounds crazy, you're like, eh, do you really see any changes? Yes, I do. Sometimes I have a plant that's flowering right over here, new blooms have opened every single day, or my leaf, my sunflowers have gotten another new set of leaves, or they're taller, or they're looking more proud. So it's just really fun to, to check in on my garden every day. It brings me a lot of joy. So let's go ahead and jump in and start checking out those beds. And as we go along, I'm gonna talk about areas that'll be putting some new stuff in. Just a little greenhouse check-in. On this top shelf here, we have a whole bunch of flowers that have been started. And there are tiny little sprouts starting to come out on that, as you can see here. The Clemson spineless okra is starting to come up, and that is likely going to get placed um, in the garden where some other things haven't come up. I visited a local nursery, and the plants they got me, I couldn't resist. So I picked up a pineapple beefsteak tomato. It was a beautiful looking plant, and... Um, I just felt that I wanted this unique variety in my garden, so I will be planting that today. I purchased a Tabasco plant, and I have never grown Tabasco peppers, but most of my hot peppers are not really doing too great this year, so I bought a Tabasco pepper to add to my garden. We of course have these one of those two strawberry plants back there that needs to be planted. There's another one down low. Down here on this lower shelf, we've had some success with uh, basil germinating. So this was my original basil that I planted um, March 21st. It's not very big. I am kind of considering planting it just to uh, put it into the garden and let it do what it's going to do. And then over here we can see that we have some basil that we uh, recently planted on April 21st that has begun to sprout because this was simply a not enough basil for my garden. Towards the back we have some cilantro that has started to sprout. We still just have one of these lettuce plants I should probably put in the garden. And then there is another um, strawberry plant over here. And then this is, oh, I'm sorry, this is a sage plant. There's a strawberry plant on the shelf below. Um, these are ancho peppers and cayenne peppers, and they have not yet germinated. And those were planted on April 21st. Here is an area in the very first bed in the front right hand corner where we have a couple of things going on. Over here, we have three homestead tomato plants, and they're looking taller and stronger and more mature this week than they were last week. This is the one that you saw on the video uh, where I treated it with neem oil. You can see some of those leaves in the bottom still have some discoloration, but the new growth doesn't seem to. So I think the plant is settling in and the neem oil is helping. There's the third one behind that. Up front here in front of the Better Boy tomato that I purchased, I'd taken a sucker, just broke it off and stuck it into the soil, and as we can see, um, they're starting to take off. They were really limp and dying and pathetic, and you can see I took off most of the leaves out of the one coming out of the left, but the one on the right is uh, settling in. Seems to be happy, it's perked up. Here is the Better Boy tomato that I had purchased. 
It is now reaching the top of the cage and there are a whole bunch of blooms on it. Check out those adorable little blooms. I think we should be getting uh, the start of little tomatoes very soon. This first little bunch down here was the first set to begin to bloom. Um, I don't know if we are getting any little tomatoes just yet. I tried to come out here and make sure I was pollinating, um, you know, by touching the little flowers and touching the other little flowers to help distribute um, the pollen in order to pollinate and, um, you know, make a tomato. But I don't yet see any tomatoes there, but that will definitely be the first bunch. Speaking of that, if you look at this plant, um, there are branches that are down below where this first fruit is setting. So um, I will be uh, breaking these lower branches off so it can put the energy towards the tomatoes. And then any sort of suckers that are coming out between um, any cracks, I will be taking those off. And let me show you an example of a sucker right up here. Here we go. So we have a sucker right here. It's sort of um, in the armpit of the plant. Let me move these leaves out of the way. There we go. See how it is right there in the armpit of the plant? This is the main stem and then this is a, an offshoot. But this right here, this guy is a sucker. So we will just go ahead and prune him out of there so he doesn't take any of the energy away from the main stalk and the shoots which are producing the fruit. And then this was the little sucker. See how he's got all these little hairs on him right here? You can try to plant him or put him in water and get him to grow roots. And then you can grow a clone of the mother plant without having to start from seed. And uh, yeah, then you have more better boy tomatoes. So maybe I will do an experiment and put this little sucker into some water and see what happens. Over here to the right of the better boy tomato that I purchased, it was, um, one of the only tomatoes I purchased until this week when I purchased another one. There are two, oh sorry, three delicious tomatoes. And they are looking really healthy. I'm trying to keep them unstaked as long as possible so they can build up their strength. We can see here they've got some, you know, lower leaves that are really close down to the soil. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and prune a whole bunch of those off this week um, so that the plant can devote its energy to the growth of the plant and to create an airspace between the soil and the bottom of the plant so that uh, moisture isn't retained there and then blight sets in and then it takes over the whole plant. A couple leaves that kind of have this discoloration on them, that was part of the reason that I started treating with neem oil, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove those too. All right, happy tomatoes. Over in the back right hand corner is where I planted the four varieties of bush beans. You can see that they have grown significantly from last week. Last week they were basically just germinating seeds and now here's what they look like. One of the things about these bush beans is I planted four varieties. So this right here I planted two rows of contender bush beans from M.I. Gardner on 417. Right here I planted two rows of jade bush beans. I have one coming up right here and then that's it. None of them you know, none of the other ones came up from the jade bush beans. I don't really know what happened there. Um, if something came through and just ate them all, I <laughs> found all my seeds, but they're just, there's one and it looks rather sickly. It's not doing well. So I'm not really sure what the deal with that one is. Um, kind of deciding, I think I'll give it one more week and then next week uh, after I come back from my trip and we do our walkthrough, if I don't see anything there, then we'll go ahead and plant another variety of bean in in that section. Then we have strike bush beans here from MI Gardener and the last one are the blue lake bush beans. So I got a fair amount of them. I can tell that they've been nibbled on by some creatures. We've been keeping on top of them with some neem oil but that's what we got right now. In the front left corner here you can see our uh, several varieties of lettuce. So this back here is black seeded Simpson. It's actually doing really well. Um, I don't see any spots on it though and that to me is a defining feature of the black seeded simpson is my understanding is that it was supposed to have little freckles on it so that's interesting um in the center section here you can see these larger leaves which are looking really beautiful these are the red sails leaf lettuce and these do have a little bit of uh variegated red speckling throughout the leaves so those are looking really gorgeous um, and then up front here we have the prize head leaf lettuce which has these sort of longer looking uh, leaves but 
overall they're doing pretty well. There is some nibbling that's happening from pests, but this is probably the best looking lettuce that I have ever <laughs> grown uh, any year. I also have some Paris Island lettuce right over there, but it is piddly and it's not really, it hasn't changed since last week. But look at this, this is really beautiful. It's kind of the high intensity method like my gardener talks about on his channel. So they're all planted really close together and there's just not, it's a very small area here. So I would say it's maybe one foot by three foot. Uh, for these three varieties of lettuce. Let me pick one of these uh, red sail leaf fronds here to uh, bring on over there and show you. There we go, and how beautiful is that? Perfect little leaf. It's got so much of the, the coloration in it, and um, it's looking really, actually, you know, quite healthy. Like I said, this is the best looking lettuce that I have ever grown, so. Um, let's take a little sample, actually. I don't really make a habit out of just like munching on lettuce out of the garden, but I did bring my water bottle down. So I'll just give this a little quick rinse, because why not? Crisp, cold rinse on my lettuce. It's lettuce, it's delicious. Crunchy, tastes amazing. Growing right here in my backyard, so that's awesome. That's the very first bite of anything for the season. Next, we have our sunflower section. So there is the lettuce right up front, and just beyond that is all of the sunflowers I planted. There is the mammoth sunflower and forget the other variety. So the first two rows up front here are the American giant variety that are supposed to get to be 14 to 16 feet tall. And then the ones in the back are mammoth sunflowers. So there are more sunflowers here than I have ever successfully grown, which is amazing. I am having a little bit of difficulty with some of them staying upright. As an example, these guys back here are really wanting to kind of tip over I've got some sticks supporting some of them to try to save them. You can see those nibbles on that leaf. Overall, they are looking like happy sunflowers soon. They're working on their third set of leaves. Yeah, so hopefully we have a lot of beautiful sunflowers this season. And you can see a bag of some um, Trifecta Plus from MI Gardener right over there, as well as a bag of eggshells that I saved up for six months and then ground up. But uh, yeah, just for comparison, um, let's go ahead and get some close-ups on some of these and you can see how big they actually are. So there is a healthy trio of sunflowers. Let me just kind of go ahead and put my hand next to it so you can see their height right now. Over here in the back corner, this is where the problem starts. Dump, dump, dump. I planted a ton of corn back here and it's not looking very good. All right, so I planted this corn April 17th, and I have very few corn that are actually coming up. So what I'm gonna do with this back area over here is I went ahead and sprouted some okra. It's probably a little premature to be putting it into the ground. I hope it doesn't get any kind of like transplant shock, but this is Clemson spineless okra. So I figured I would put that over here. The few things of corn that I have probably are not gonna do very well. Uh, to be honest, but I'm just gonna leave them let them do what they're supposed to do. My friend gifted me black corn <laughs> over um, the Christmas holiday and she gave me a kit that had maybe like eight or ten corn scenes in it and I think most of the ones that have come up are actually from that variety So I'm just gonna leave them be let them do what they're gonna do if they turn into something great if not you know, it's just what nature does. So sometimes things are successful, sometimes things aren't. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop some okra in this spot instead. I also have these three basil plants. I started a whole bunch more basil plants, but these ones have kind of just, you know, gotten to a point where they're not really doing too much. They're not really as big as I'd like them to be for me to plant them, but I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the ground anyway. If they're gonna do something, they're gonna do something. I'm just gonna let nature go ahead and take its course.
in the front left section here we have cilantro growing and we also put neem oil on this it is still looking a little bit lacy from bugs eating it but we'll see what happens have some lemon queen sunflowers over here to the left that I did start from seed and then transplant. They're actually doing quite well. I had one that got snapped in half and broke this week, so I started with six. I am down to four. And just as a guide, so you can see how tall this one is, uh, you know, twice the length of my hand. This is the best looking one. This one needed a little support, but it's doing much better. See. I'll take the support off now. Right behind that we have some scallop yellow bush squash. These are patty pan squash. And look at them. They are starting to put out more leaves and settle in. The one on the left is looking happier than the one on the right. But that's okay. Hopefully they will set some roots down soon and really get settled in and take off. In front of those squash, we have a blank area here, as you can see. I actually planted some seeds directly for some dark green zucchini squash, and nothing came up. And those seeds were planted uh, April 18th, and um, as you can see, there's nothing that has come up. It has been, uh, today is May 3rd, so it's been up. I'm going to say too long for anything to probably really happen there, so I am going to put something new there. I purchased these two plants at a local nursery, um, so I'm going to put these in. This is a Tabasco pepper plant. There we go. I hear it makes a ton of those tiny little seeds, or um, tiny little Tabasco peppers, so those will be fun to kind of make it into something. Uh, here this plant is quite prolific. The other item I purchased is a pineapple tomato, which is probably like the last thing that I need is another tomato plant. This is so beautiful I could not pass it up. It is a beefsteak tomato. I believe it is an indeterminate variety. This is from a local nursery that I have never been into and their plants were just gorgeous. So um, I bought this pineapple tomato and that bill or a tabasco pepper plant so i'm just gonna go ahead and put these here i know i plant things really close together so don't rain on my parade i know they are in now so this one is the uh pineapple tomato and that one is the tabasco pepper if we go back over here towards the corner Along the edges here we have beets, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Eggplants actually did really well here the very first year that we had a garden. They're all looking quite healthy and happy. Over from the midsection here over we have a row of zinnias, and these are the giant pink enchantress zinnias. There are six plants here. Oh, I'm sorry, right here. Floop. And then over here we have six German Johnson tomatoes. Here and here are the German Johnson tomatoes. There are six of them. They're looking quite healthy. And these have the traditional tomato looking leaves on a plant. Over here we have the Tiffin Mennonite variety of tomatoes. There are six of them. And these are a potato leaf variety of tomato. And I don't think I have grown any potato leaf variety of tomato uh, in years past. So it was kind of interesting to really take a glance at how different the leaves really are. They're much more long and smooth along the edges. They don't have the sort of ruffles that the traditional tomato leaves have. The Tiffin Mennonites are actually looking quite healthy. There are six of those. Here we have a couple zinnias that are scarlet flame. There are three here and then three that go back across over there. In this corner we have cantaloupe. This is the Hale's best variety of cantaloupe right here. And I'm going to go ahead and prune off some of those lower leaves real quick. Hopefully we'll focus its energy on growing. They haven't really done too much since they've been transplanted. There is another one right over there, and again, it's just not really doing all too much right now. It's starting to put out some other leaves. Up front we have two kinds of Swiss chard. There is rainbow Swiss chard, which I got as uh, one of those additional gifts from my friend Emily for Christmas. 
So rainbow Swiss chard are the three sections of the plant here, and then the other three, one, two, three, are Ford hook Swiss chard, which have white stems. The rainbow Swiss chard is actually taking off better than the Ford hook Swiss chard, interestingly enough. We have our third bed here, and it is still a mess. I do need to do some work out here uh, with the soaker hose. Um, I just got the stakes in the mail, so that is great. I will be installing those very soon. We have uh, four bell pepper plants right up here in the front. So there's one, two, three, and four. I am seeing some nibbling on these plants. Let's have a look if there's anything on them. Don't actually see anything on them, but we will keep an eye on those. Next, we have six jalapenos. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, some of them are doing a little better than others. This one right here in the middle is looking a little sad. He might just need some water, so I'll make sure that they get really uh, soaked today. We're expecting rain tomorrow and the next day. There wasn't much growth on the bell peppers and the jalapenos. They tend to like it really hot. Up front here we have Romanesco broccoli. Again, I think it's a little late in the year for them to be able to make it, but I'm just letting them do their thing. Romanesco broccoli is absolutely beautiful. Um, so if it happens to, to grow, that would be great. We have three varieties of tomatoes over here and there's two of each. So this is the super beefsteak variety right here. This is the Super Sweet 100 Small Hybrid Tomato here. And here we have the Honey Delight Hybrid, which is like a yellow pear-shaped cherry tomato. Here we have some Zinnia Giant Purple um, flowers here, and these are kind of getting nibbled on a little bit as well. I have been spraying them with the neem oil, but something seems to like snacking on them. There is a huge amount of growth with our acorn squash back over here in the corner. We hope to see a really great harvest off of these this year. That would be fun to grow. We've never successfully grown a hard gourd of any kind, so we really like acorn squash, and uh, we would love to see a harvest off of these four plants. Next we have our loofahs. There are three, one, two, three. They are getting nibbled on a little. You can see they're a bit lacy as well, but um, there has been growth in them this week. Since last week. And they are not yet large enough for me to need to worry about the trellising situation. Maybe in the next week or two, we'll see some substantial growth from them. Lastly, in the front corner over here, we have Virginia peanuts, but nothing has come to the party yet, except a bunch of little teeny tiny weeds. So I will need to pull those. Hopefully we see something start to sprout. Those were planted on April 18th. So um, they do take a while to germinate. And then the gnome is on duty as always. All right guys, so that was it for this week's garden tour. A couple of things that I planted in so you can see those changes. Oh, Buster is barking from inside of the house. But uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope to show you the garden again. Next week, I, we're getting to the point where hopefully we'll see a whole bunch of growth. Anyway, I hope you guys have a beautiful day as always and we'll see you in my next video. Bye.